Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustments. This meeting is to consider applications for minor variances and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. The role of the committee is to review the proposals that are before it, consider the evidence provided, and make a decision based on the four tests established by the Planning Act. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we have adopted the following process. Tonight's meeting will be uh, live streamed and available for future viewing on the town's live stream page at oakville.ca slash live. People attending this committee meeting are to be courteous and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and others in attendance. We ask that cellular devices be switched off at this time or at least maintained on silent. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair. All persons wishing to address the committee are required to provide their name and address. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to all speakers. Any submissions beyond five minutes will be at the discretion of the chair. Any materials presented to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Persons seeking a deferral or withdrawal of an application will be invited to do so at the onset of the meeting. If a request for a deferral is granted, it is the responsibility of the applicant to contact the Secretary Treasurer regarding the scheduling of a new hearing date. At the request of the committee, the applicant may be asked to provide a brief presentation and answer any questions that may arise. If the applicant has any concerns with the recommendations and proposed conditions found within the staff report, this would be the time to advise the committee. All persons who wish to support or oppose the application will then be given an opportunity to speak to the committee. In the interest of efficiency, groups sharing the same view are asked to select a spokesperson and individual speakers are asked to not cover the same points as those who have already spoken. The applicant will then be given an opportunity to respond to comments made by any interested parties and answer any additional questions from the committee. Discussion will then be closed and the matter will be taken into committee for a decision. Once the committee has made an oral decision, the person desiring a written copy must, must file with the Secretary Treasurer a written request for notice of the decision. A green sheet is provided on the table at the back of the room for this purpose and, the on, and only those filing such a request will be given any subsequent notice of an appeal. Notice of the committee's decision will be mailed to the applicant to anyone who has filed a written request no later than 10 days following the decision of minor variances and 15 days for consent applications. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal the decision to the local planning appeal tribunal and the last date to appeal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding and the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision will then be notified by written correspondence. Thank you. At this time, uh, we have no regrets for this evening. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interests? I see none. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here who is interested in uh, requesting a deferral or withdrawal of application at this time? Deferral or, or uh, withdrawal of applications? I see none. Okay, thank you. Then we will start with the first item on our agenda, uh, which is item number one, uh, CAV 083 of 2019 at 351 Dundas Street East. Good evening. Good Your name and address for the record, please. It's uh, Christina Didiano of M. Sheet Developments, 895 Brant Street. Diliano. Sorry? Diliano. Didiano. Didiano. D-I-D-I-A-N-O. Thank okay. you. This is Ms. Didiano. Who is here in, uh, for application CEV 0832 of uh, 2019 at 351 Dundas Street East? Um, myself of MSU Developments and our architect. On yes, I'm just looking for um, other members in the audience who are here okay. as parties of interest. Anyone here for this application? Okay, I see none. You may go ahead. This is your time to do uh, your presentation. Uh, we have um, done our site visits and we are familiar with the application for this retirement home with the uh, variances that are before us. Um, are there any questions of Ms. Didiano at this time? Any items of clarification that you would need? Uh, is there, uh, uh, if you want her to do a presentation. Then. Yes, if, then we will have her do a presentation. Go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, so as um, our application states, we are proposing a um, retirement complex consisting of a seven-story um, retirement. Maybe speak into the mic yeah, or sorry. bring it closer to you. You, you have the ability to there do so. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry about that. No, no, no. So sorry. As our application states, we are proposing a retirement home complex consisting of seven stories um, as well as a 20-story building on the site. 
um, consisting of a total of 323 units. So th we are requesting three different minor variances, um, one in reference to the height of the building, one um, with the number of stories, and then a reduction to the rear yard setback. So we are seeking a reduction of the rear yard setback from six meters um, to 2.8, which is the um, least the, or the smallest amount there. Um, and then the height is being increased from 47 meters up to 63.45 meters. And the number of stories increasing to 15, sorry, from 15 stories up to 20 meters. Um, so we, um, we've been working with uh, both the town staff as well as the urban design to get to the point of our um, site plan design and building design and we feel that all of the minor variances are minor in nature and um, are complementary to the application. Um, everything does fall within the intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaws. Um, staff has been very supportive in our development and um, we're very happy to see this moving forward. Very well, thank you. You you have gone, you're, you're in the first stage of your site plan application, so you've gone first rounds? But this is actually our fourth circulation. Okay, fourth circulation, very well. Okay, are there any questions of Ms. Didiano at this time? So <coughs> go ahead, Ms. Mire. Um Yeah, can you share with me why this is the fourth submission? So our initial application started as a 18-story um, slab building or the, or the building A, which is now 20 stories. Um, we've gone through um, a lot of revision work with, again, working with the town staff and with urban design. And we've come to the point where the final design is now the 20-story building, which has improved um, quite significantly the, the form and the massing of the building, has improved the design, um, and I think it has uh, just improved the overall design of the building that is um, more, more appealing. Okay. Um, in a lot of these um, larger uh, towers and developments, there have been a question of parking being an issue. Can you address that? Um, parking would not be an issue. Um, Again, not necessarily a matter regarding the minor variance, but the the height has not impacted the number of suites or the, the total GFA that is being proposed in the site. <clears throat> um, thank you. Um, another question. Um, to the best of your knowledge, are there other 20-story buildings contemplated? Not to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so having reviewed your application and, and looking at the height based on uh, what my colleague has suggested, so you're saying that from one submission, mm -hmm. uh, you had submitted a certain, I think you said 18 stories? Correct. And it's now 20 stories, yes. but with the 20 stories, it's improved the massing and improved the design? Yes. So. Can you just explain, like, is that from working with the town that you were able to improve those two items, even though that the height is another two stories? Can you yes. just explain so, just that element? Yes, absolutely. So we've, again, as, I, as I've mentioned, we've worked with both the town staff and um, specifically with urban design staff, um, looking at their mid, mid and, and tall building guidelines, so we've specifically um, addressed some of the items in that, in, in how we've designed the building. Um, so actually I can show you an image if, if this is yeah, it works. available. Okay, yeah. perfect. So you'll can, you can kind of see right up in here, or actually let me select a different one here. One moment. Um, there we go, I've got some renderings. You'll kind of see in this this image here we've actually stepped back the building so it's only sorry it's only about um, 12 stories at this end here and then it increases up to 20 stories so what it's done is it's slimmed out the design of the building um, so that it creates less of an impact um, from a shadow study perspective as well as any impact that it would have um, to other neighboring residents or properties So then how it's been redesigned would have less of an impact on the neighbors from a negative perspective? Correct. Thank you. 
And then the other side of the building, that's all retail space? Sorry, can you the, repeat that? The other side of the building on, in the, the, reflection, the reflection picture, is that all retail space? Um, there is about um, 7,000 square feet of retail space fronting on Dundas. Any further questions or items of clarification? Uh, for Brenda. Uh, Mr. Hassan, we have a question for you. Um, uh, Madam Chair, uh, to the um, planning services, um, are there other applications pending of this magnitude along the Trafalgar-Dundas corridor? Through you, Madam Chair, um, my understanding through discussion with urban uh, design staff and other internal staff is that uh, to date we haven't processed site plan applications, but there is contemplation of rezoning application and official plan amendment applications pending for the Trafalgar um, Urban Corridor. So to, to clarify, Madam Chair, that is not in place but pending? The reason through, you, uh, through you, Madam Chair, they haven't received final approval or been subject to um, staff review at this point. Uh, uh, just to clarify, those are applications, or are you referring to the bylaw? No, through you, Madam Chair, there are discussions that we're having with proponents at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, the other question I have is, it's um, in the notes that we've been provided, um, the intent of the policy is to provide for 20 stories of height at Dundas and Trafalgar intersection. I haven't been able to see that anywhere in the proposed policy. Okay, in, 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 in the notes or in the bylaw, I've seen 15 stories, but I, and you're sharing that the intent of the policy is to provide for 20 stories, <coughs> but I, I don't see any reference to that. Can you please provide reference? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, it'd be on page, um, I guess, two of the actual staff comments, section 7.6.48 BV of the um, North Oakville East Secondary Plan in relation to that area in particular at the intersection, the 20 stories of height in relation to the transit corridor and where the growth and development and ultimately the height and density um, should be directed as per the official plan. And one more question. Um, I, I'm wondering if, if, if uh, town staff could explain the comment to assist in achieving transit supportive development levels anticipated along the Trafalgar Dundas corridor. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. So, in relation to that policy, again, from a high level position, from a provincial aspect, that's again where the growth and development um, from the provincial and official plan perspective in terms of policy uh, to facilitate these uh, types of applications should be directed. And that's why town staff are supportive of this uh, application uh, to date. Thank you. Just uh, off the top of your head, the, the Prince Michael development off of Dundas, that's about two or three stop traffic lights past Trafalgar. Do you know what the highlights, heights of those are? Uh, to you, Madam Chair, unfortunately, I'm not sure of the actual height in stories. Okay. It's lower. It is? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> I see none. Um, if you're satisfied with the comments that staff have uh, placed in for uh, your, um, the, the proposed conditions, uh, we will take this matter into discussion and uh, take it into committee for a decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who would like to move a motion or start the discussion at least? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Kroski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm going to move this application be approved as supplied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I think it's clear from staff's comments that the intent of the official plan is to allow for greater height in this area. The 20 stories, the maximum height variance just implements that policy of the official plan. And uh, I think the rear yard setback is really a technical variance in this situation. And uh, a retirement uh, facility of this size, clearly a desirable addition to the town. I'd make that approval subject to the two conditions requested by staff. The development proceed in general accordance with the drawings provided and add a building permit issue within two years. First one is to the satisfaction of the uh, director of uh, yep. planning services. My apologies. 
the, the but development. you reference them as staff yes. asked for them, so yes. it's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a discussion on that recommendation? Okay. All those in support? All those opposed? Abstain. You can't abstain. You can't. It goes as a, as a no, as a, no, as as a, a no. refusal. Yeah, refusal. as a denial. Refusal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're opposed. You're opposed. Okay. Yeah. So four, four, and one against. Okay, you're. Okay, thank you very much. The second item on the agenda is a CAV 084 of 2019 at 1267 Cornwall Road. Good evening. Good Your evening. name and address for the record, please. I'm Patricia Pisano and 1276 Cornwall Road, Unit 8. Very well. Thank you. Pizzetto. P-E-Z-Z-A-N-O. Ms. Pizzano, just allow me to canvas the room. Who is here in, uh, for application CAV 084 2019 at 1267 Cornwall Road? Okay, I see none. Thank you. Um, once again, this is your time. We have, uh, we've, we've done our site visits. We're familiar with the application for the school parking lot. Um, are there any questions of Ms. Pisano at this time, or items of clarification, or would you like a presentation? Okay, I see that we're fine. If you choose to, uh, you have, this is your time, so if you have anything further to add or you'd like to share with us, um, we're happy to hear that, and then we can take this matter into committee if you're satisfied. I, I'm satisfied with what's in the documentation. Okay, very well. So we will take this matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Mr. Hardcastle, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> having reviewed the materials, including the staff report, and undertaken a site inspection, um, I'm satisfied that, that the requested variance uh, conforms to the test of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, um, subject to the two conditions noted by staff, namely that the uh, commercial school be permitted in general accordance with the site plan submitted by the applicant and that the approval expire within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction and in cases where the building permit is not required that the proposed scope of work has not been completed. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. The application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, application CV 085 of 2019 at 1533 Warren Drive. Good evening, Mr. Capper. Good evening, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarn Associates. Our mailing address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Mississauga, Ontario, L5R3K6. Very and well. We're here on behalf of the, uh, the future owners of the property. Um, but authorized agents of the current owners of the property as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Just allow me to canvas the room. Who is here for application CV 085 of 2019 at 1533 Warren Drive? Okay, I see none. Go ahead, Mr. Kaplan. It's, uh, your Madam time. Chair, in the interest of efficiency, I, I could let you know that we have read the staff report. Uh, we're in agreement with the conditions, and we have no concerns with the information that's presented therein. Very well. Are there any items of clarification or questions for Mr. Kapper at this time? This proposed dwelling with an increased RFA and a front yard setback. Did I see a hand? No? Okay. Um, if there are no items of clarification, we can take this matter into committee. Sure. All right. Mr. Flemington, go ahead, sir. Madam Chair, having uh, conducted my site visits and uh, having noted that there are no uh, letters with regards to support or in opposition and having listened to uh, the applicant I am prepared to uh, move the motion in support of uh, with the following conditions that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated May 27 2019 and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction 
Very well. Thank you, Mr. Fontaine. Is there a discussion on these recommendations? I see none. All those in support? The application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. <coughs> and the last item on our agenda for this evening is CAV 086 of 2019 at 1528 Venetia Drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. One correction, Madam Chair. If you have some of the forms, say May 30th, but the notes are May 27th on the last application. Mr. Kaffer, the uh, condition that staff has cited was May 27th for the elevated drawings, but some yes, of the drawings that we have here are dated May, May, the, May 30th. Is there... Brandon. Yeah. Brandon decides the date, so I'll have to... Okay. Oh, sorry. Mr. No, 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 no. Okay. So Just an item of clarification that Ms. Murray has uh, pointed out before Mr. Kapper leaves the room. Well, through you, Madam Chair, in, in terms of the dates that I'm looking at, the date on the bottom corner of the title block reads May 27, 2019, and I don't see any revision dates, uh, nor were any required from staff. Madam Chair, if I could step in. This is the existing site plan with the date uh, of the 30th. Mm -hmm. The other drawings have the 27th. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for the clarification. Just being airing on the, sa on yeah. the safe side. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Capper. I apologize, sir. No We're worries. now uh, dealing with your Venetia Drive application. Just let me canvas the room. Sure. Who is here for application CV 086 of 2019 at 1528 Venetia Drive? Are, the, are you here for this application, the Venetia Drive application? Okay, would you like to address the committee or you're just here to he listen? Okay, very well. I'll ask after his presentation and then we will... Uh, He's moving forward. Yeah. So, sir, you're, you're aware that staff is not uh, in support of your um, application, not only for the variances, but they are under the strong recommendation that once you have um, applied for the, um, the building permit, there will be additional variances that you will need. Uh, possibly, yes. So Which, the plans can be adjusted to accommodate that. Okay, that but time. we can't <clears throat> necessarily approve variances that are going to result in other variances. We like to see the package as a whole so that we can understand the impact of the variances that are requested. Yes, I understand, but it seems like those other variances are undetermined at this time. The only ones we're discussing today, I believe, is the, the garage. heights and the separated garages. Yes, so your, your choice is to move forward with, with the application as is. With those two, with those two variances. But, okay, so as long as I can understand the decision, if it's approved, are tied to these drawings, no changes. Yes, so, no changes. so no, you cannot, do you cannot change thing. any of, the, because when we approve and an application, it's as with plans as submitted, dated uh, for whatever date is that we have on these plans. I agree. So any changes to these plans will void your variances, basically. Agreed. And the drawings you've submitted require further variances. Well, we do have the nine meter front yard setback. Sorry, say that, that was, again? We do have the nine meter front yard setback. That, that's fine. If you want, absolutely, let's move forward then. <clears throat> so the only, the only variances that we're proceeding with are the Mac, the private garage dwelling, the two attached private garages, and the, to permit the height of 9.28. Correct. Okay. So if we move forward, nothing else can come from this application and these ver and these drawings cannot be changed. Correct. Because we approve them based on these drawings. Correct. Now, what town staff is saying that based on these drawings that you've submitted, that you want us to approve your variances on, you will require further variances. Looking at just these drawings. I understand. Uh, we're here today to discuss the two variances that are in question. If a further variance is required, we will then pursue a further application to the committee at okay. that time. But I don't believe it shall be. Okay, if you're confident with that and you're ready to proceed, go ahead, sir. It, the floor is yours. It's your time to present your application and take us through it. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, committee members, staff. Your uh, name, my name and address is Peter for the record. Sorry? Your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Peter Vozikas of Empire Design Company from 5 North Ridge Crescent in Georgetown. 
here to represent the owners of 1528 Venetia Drive before this application. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Vizikas. Go ahead, <clears throat> sir. After your review of the justification report provided, our proposed site plan and photos, we feel that the increase in height in having two separated attached uh, detached garages, or attached garages, sorry, uh, closely meet the official plan guidelines and closely fit within respect to the zoning bylaw, the current mm -hmm. zoning bylaw. We feel these two variances are both minor in nature and are seeking relief from council to proceed for a building permit application. The two separated garages are encompassed with the styling of this home and both garage areas combined are less than the required total area permitted. Based on having two separate garages, yes, we will require two separated driveways, um, which again, each fit within the regulations of the bylaws and are separated from each other by 50 meters as stipulated by engineering. <clears throat> the distance between our driveway and the adjacent neighbor to the east is approximately 5.5 meters, which is ample separation in order to maneuver two vehicles. And this distance is also similar to other properties within the neighborhood. There are hundreds of properties within Oakville which have driveway separations of less than 1.5 meters, mostly in higher density neighborhoods, I understand, of course. And all those residents all seem to get by without any difficulty. Venetia Drive is flat. There are no hills or major obstructions to impair visibility. There is only a slight bend in the roadway which will not impact the visibility for access or, and circulation in any manner to our adjacent neighbor. Based on these facts, we strongly believe that we meet the requirements of the planning policy 11.1.9H. Now, having said that, I would like to bring to the committee's attention a property that I have identified with a similar driveway configuration around the corner to the west, approximately 100 meters away, having two separate entrances. If I may submit these photos. <clears throat> okay. This particular, sorry. This particular property measures approximately 10 meters apart between entrances. And uh, it is a circular connected driveway, which we did have originally, and we took that out to retain the tree. And the owner would prefer to retain the tree as well. So we've discontinue the circular connection between our driveways and just have two separated ones. The next photo identifies this tree here, which if you can read the number there, it's approximately three feet away from the edge of the curb and basically from the trunk, from the edge of the trunk. And I know forestry would want to have a hard surface area closer to the drip line of the tree, which we are going to be maintaining ourselves. Um, <clears throat> if I may further continue, um, this particular property here has been functioning this way for years without infringing in any way to the adjacent neighbors. Based on the fact that the town has already allowed such a design to remain, we feel that our proposal is much less intrusive to the neighbors than this one and hoping that the committee members will agree. Our site plan and arbor support have both been adjusted to retain the existing front yard tree measuring approximately 0.7 meters in diameter. And uh, again, the owner would prefer to retain that tree as well. The two separated driveways will not impede onto the roots of this tree based on a report, which will allow it to remain its health for years to come. The distance from the edge of the trunk of this tree to the edge of the proposed asphalt will be obviously much more than what you have viewed in these photos. Um, and I've provided you, and underground services are far enough away from the roots which will also not affect the health of this tree at all. Based on all of our studies, we strongly feel that our proposal having two separated driveways will not impact the neighbors in any way with respect to traffic issues, entrance issues, parking issues, and the like. Our proposed driveway length is in excess of six meters on both ends and our front yard setback to the closest point of contact to the home will be greater than nine meters. In respect to the comment provided by planning staff, we would like to note that we will maintain the maximum walkway width permitted as stipulated in the general provisions of the zoning bylaw. We also have a DESP application underway with engineering and forestry, which should be nearing completion. 
as well, we do have an application for demolition permit, which uh, I'm assuming would be possibly issued this week. <clears throat> Having commented on the planning staff, we feel that due diligence was not accurately exercised in determining the two separated garages and driveways would not be able to be coordinated within this neighborhood. The set example provided to you today depicts a different scenario. The two separated garage uh, garages actually help reduce the massing of the home as opposed to having an 18 foot solid wall of garage door. If planning would reconsider, I am able to provide them with a streetscape view, both of uh, elevations showing the existing homes on either side and by way of a site plan view, which will prove to them that the design of this home fits nicely within this neighborhood. And we are maintaining the characteristics of the neighborhood by low pitched gable roofs, as opposed to um, expansive modern style homes, which tend to clash in older neighborhoods like this. Um, chairman and members of the committee, <clears throat> based on all the factual information provided to you, we feel that the variances of increased height and the two separate attached garages are both minor in nature. We request the committee to accept our proposal in order to grant us relief to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Voskos. Um, I have a question of planning staff, Mr. Hassan. I'm, I'm kind of confused because while I understand that the driveway permits procedure criteria as listed in the staff report, it does not allow for the two separate driveways. We have nothing, it's not in our purview to vote on this, right? Because it's not part of the variances listed. Is there a variance if, if of such magnitude? No, through you, Madam Chair, it would be permitted in the eyes of the zoning bylaw. That's why there's not a variance related to it but planning staff took the position that if a permit can't be issued from a development engineering standpoint, then it wouldn't be supportable from a planning standpoint in relation to the overall um, components of the applications that are tied together. So from our perspective, if we voted on this application to permit a maximum of two attached private garages per dwelling, okay, um, because of the zoning bylaw here, those homes are permitted one garage. So initially, essentially we're giving him two garages and then he has to contend with the driveway issue, whether we, you know, agree with it or not. Well, through you, Madam Chair, if I can clarify further, planning staff um, don't have an issue with the style or massing of the building or the two garages. Um, we are actually in support of those, noting the single car garage doors um, don't create any visual prominence um, in relation to the rest of the building. It is again, just the permitting issue and the technical aspects of the development engineering site plan review and the two separate driveways. Okay. So nothing that we can do here will influence that. He will just have to deal with it from a different perspective on a different procedural level. Yeah, through you Madam Chair, that would be correct. Okay. That was my question. Are there any other items of question? Yes, Mr. Talowski, go ahead. So a follow up for Mr. Hassan. So the way I'm reading this, if the variance were approved, then he'd be allowed to do the two separate garages, but he's not gonna get two separate driveway permits. So the only way to implement the variance would to be to, would be to revise the site plan to come up with a new driveway configuration that only had one access point. Well, through you, Ma uh, Madam Chair, um, a circular driveway also would work, but in the initial stages of review of the application prior to an application being submitted, the extent and width of the circular driveway was such that it would have impacted the tree and had it removed. So it was reduced to a degree. And then once the variance was applied for, that's when planning staff realized that there was two separate entrances rather than the circular design. If I may. Go ahead, Mr. Voskis. Thank you. Uh, we did have the circular connection between the two driveways previously and we received comments back from forestry in regards to the tree. We actually had that tree slated for destruction and the owner had agreed at that time, but then he, at, 
actually had a change of thought on that and would like to prefer to keep the tree. It's a healthy tree, it's nicely growing. So we actually removed the circular connection between the two in order to have just two narrow strips of uh, But what I'm hearing is like you may have to go to that, back to that uh, we can. plan of action. That's what I'm saying, we can. Our ruling here today will not affect how your driveway looks, whether you get the two strips or you don't. Mm -hmm. We have no um, authority over that, basically. Yes, I understand. Yeah. We can actually actually go back to the circular connection if that makes things easier. I'm sorry, Mr. Taxi, did you have any follow-up questions? Mr. Voskes just wanted to uh, interject on that Yes, point. Madam Chair, just a follow-up with staff. Uh, wouldn't we have the same problem having two separate access points if they went back to a circular driveway? No, through you, Madam Chair. My understanding is that a circular driveway doesn't require an additional permit on top of the existing uh, entrance that is currently used by the property today. It'd be a separate entrance um, in the eyes of the criteria bylaw to permit that additional entrance rather than a circular one. To me, that seems so technical. And yeah. it, I mean, it, I'm sorry. I have, it's just how I feel. I, I can go either way. It doesn't. Yeah. Mr. Hardcastle, go ahead. But um, nonetheless, you can't get a permit. And if you modify the site plan, then your variances are null and void if we issue a decision here today. It strikes me that you're in your catch-22 again. Yes. So I'm looking at this thinking this, this is a deferral. If you don't want us to say yes or no and risk, that's the thing. I mean, we're having this discussion, and normally the, the forum for referrals have been closed already. But in the interest of this application, we see your dilemma and your predicament. So, I mean... It seems like we are all in agreement in the sense that maybe it's best to defer it and decide with town staff how you want to deal with your driveway. Because as far as we're concerned, it makes no difference to us whether it's circular or, or two strips because we don't get to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes before us, if town staff supports, then you can get the permit for it. We're okay with these variances. And town staff have said that as much, that they actually support your variances. It's just an issue of getting a permit for the driveways now. Hmm. Okay. I hope I've summarized everything correctly. Does yeah. anyone else have anything <clears throat> else to say? Well, if, if I'm sorry to Go ahead. Jump. No, no, go ahead. If we were to reconsider the driveway configuration leading to these small garage doors, would the planning staff be in support of that? Because I can easily render a revised site plan ASAP by tomorrow morning. No, we can't. We, we, does it make it, a, does it help at all? I don't know. No, because any decision that we make has yes. to reference plans that we've seen. So unless we've seen them, you know, it's not a minor change. It's going to, elevations are different <clears throat> than. Let me check my folder. Okay. I, okay. I, I will allow you that moment because we are, uh, not you're the last item on our agenda, but I, I'm not really that's sure that not that's what the neighbors saw either. Yeah, and, that, and then we also have a, an issue with circulation, as the secretary treasurer has said. When when these applications go out and circulation goes out to the hundred meter radius, people have seen different have seen a different uh, set of plans than than anything that you are going to adjust now. And I don't if think I anyone's comfortable on the fly. Making yeah, either. A decision, so this is the yeah. way. Th this was our previous submission. Still prior to those. the revised right. one. Yeah, I think that that's still, is that co still considered two, two separate right. driveways, Brendan? No, oh. Through you, Madam Chair, my understanding is that that would be considered a circular driveway. I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I will leave it up to my, my colleagues, but I'm not comfortable making a decision on the fly. We don't necessarily, it's not part of our procedure um, that we do that. Mr. Towski, you had your hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just looking at this plan, it would appear that if this was the solution, the applicant's probably going to need a third variance for the driveway width. And I'm just not prepared to accept a change on the fly here with what I believe and what staff believes is going to require another variance. I think the applicant's far better off deferring uh, 
paying the deferral fees may be a lot cheaper than paying for a brand new application, which it looks like you're going to need. Yeah. If I may. Yeah. I agree to what you say, Mr. Tulowski. This drawing here was actually one of the original drawings. The driveway width was reduced to accommodate the proper widths through the entranceways and through the connection. This is one of the older drawings. But having this is not what we passed have today, the circulation yes. and been seen by all the planning staff <clears throat> and given the thumbs up, it's very hard for us to say, we will approve it based on this, but then you're going to have to take it back. And if anything okay. with it is... Um, is objected to, then it just defies the purpose. You've just wasted your application because it just makes the variances null and void as well. I understand. So then my perception on this is that if we were to reconfigure a proper drawing of a site plan showing the proper circular connection. And town staff agrees with it and, exactly. and, and planning engineering and per. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Then we can bring that to the next committee hearing. If well, we I'll tell you that deferrals right now, if, if $685. the earliest date is August the 13th, and the fee is $685 to, to defer it. But looking at what, I mean, having this discussion, and you're lucky that we, are, we don't have uh, more applications in our roster, or else we would not have entertained this discussion. Usually, it's, it's pretty quick because we have to be fair to everyone else. Of course. But from, I mean, based on our discussion here, I think we're all leaning that you should defer it. Fair and enough. we would support it. Fair enough. So all those in support of a deferral? Okay. Well, you'll just see the secretary with the new drawings and Brandon will help you through it. And if everything goes well, we can get you in on the 13th. Uh, if the circulation is, if the drawings are in on time and they, can have it circulated to the 100 meter radius on time, you yep. will be able to get in on the 13th. It I depends will, how fast you can communicate. I will touch base with Heather. Very well. Quickly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, last item on our agenda is confirmation of the minutes for June the 25th, which I was not here for, so someone else has to uh, approve, them. approve them. Mr. Hardcastle? All right. And motion to adjourn. Oh, I didn't ask them if they had questions. Well, that's deferred. It's deferred okay. anyways. Yes, okay, very well. Who, Seven, who moved to adjourn? Who? Judy? Who? Judy? I didn't right. see. I didn't